Great, great. Thank you. Thanks everyone for sticking around and uh, thank you to the organizers for putting this virtual conference on and running it so beautifully. Um, my name is Limor Peer. I'm Associate Director for Research at the Institution for Social and Policy Studies at Yale and my co-presenter is Ethan Gates who is controlling the slide so you'll hear me asking him to um, advance. Um, real quick, um, I uh, am not a librarian. I was trained as a social scientist and um, in my role at ISPS, I oversee our data archive and reproducibility efforts. And I'm super excited to talk to you about our project, Investigating Emulation as a Service for Reproducible Research at Yale. Uh, we heard a little bit about emulation this afternoon. Um, so I'll start by giving a little bit of background and the motivation for our collaboration with the library. And then Ethan will take over and talk about uh, the EASY project and how it relates to some of the reproducibility challenges that, that we face. So next slide, please. So the Institution for Social and Policy Studies at Yale is a center for applied social science research. Our faculty study topics like voter mobilization, economic inequality, criminal justice policies, and they often conduct experiments in the real world. The data they use in these experiments is typically not very large, typically single gigabyte range, and sometimes a combination of data um, for either generated originally by the researcher and or data from other sources. Um, data are quantitative tabular and they use statistical software like R and Stata uh, for data cleaning, transformation and analysis for the most part. Um, we've been uh, at the ISPS data archive sharing and making available data and code that underpin the published results of these experiments since 2011. We currently have about 100 studies, close to 1,000 files, including data, code, logs, um, other artifacts, um, like images of treatment materials and so forth. Next slide, please. So as part of the research support that we do, um, we believe that we have responsibility and as well as expertise to assist researchers who want to disseminate and archive their research products um, that are underpinning these scientific claims. And what we do, what we focus on is computational reproducibility of these results um, by using, as I said, the data and the code um, that were used in the original study. So we do a computational reproducibility verification at the time that the materials are made available via the archive. So we, what that means is we verify that we can get the same results um, and we see ourselves, we see the archive as the first reuser of, of the data and code. So again, we heard about this earlier today. For us, reproducibility is computational reproducibility, the ability to obtain the same results from the data and the code that are used in the original study. And we do that at the time that we make the materials available via the archive. So next slide, please. The service that we provide means that the ISPS data archive approach to curation is something you can think of as data curation plus. Um, so this means that we conduct data curation and code review, um, which includes this verification. Um, so more specifically, we take a series of steps. We ensure that files are deposited uh, into the archive um, have high quality, they could be used, they could be interpreted, and we use this data quality review framework as a guide. Um, parenthetically, it's a different presentation, but we're working on a, on a tool that we're calling YARD that will structure this whole workflow. Um, and so the bottom line is that we feel pretty good about the quality of the artifacts that we have in the archive at the time that they're deposited, about the computational reproducibility um, at the time that they were deposited. So uh, last slide for me here. Um, so however, uh, problems can arise over time and artifacts are uh, often software dependent and they are by nature dynamic. And we see problems tied to the fact that original code um, is tied to legacy software um, where we can't make that software run anymore um, or a legacy software that's no longer available. Um, there are issues with proprietary software um, that an end user might not um, be able to access. Um, 
Um, and that is also difficult to package with reproducibility packaging tools. Um, we see uh, we are not doing any containerization, but we imagine that there are issues around packaging runtime that's no longer supported on, on, moderate, on modern operating systems. So if our goal is to make sure that any user at a future time, which we realize is a high standard, can computationally reproduce results, how do we address these challenges? Um, how do we make sure that um, we can get these uh, uh, materials to work once they're available on the data archive? And so our solution that we're exploring is a software environment that will include all these elements. And Ethan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Awesome, thanks Lamar. So as, as Lamar said, I am the software preservation analyst in Yale University Library, uh, specifically here working on the easy or emulation as a service infrastructure project. Um, just for some quick background, we started at Yale in January of 2018. Uh, we're an initially two and a half year Mellon and Sloan Foundation funded project with the goal of deploying and scaling infrastructure and services for software emulation. And that includes distributed management, sharing, documentation discovery, and access improvements. Um, that overarching goal has a lot of branches and pieces that I don't have time to get into today. So I encourage you to check out our full project site. But what I do want to talk about are specifically the results of our tests with the Emulation as a Service Platform, or EAAS, to address this challenge of providing reproducibility for software-dependent data from the ISPS data archive. So to very quickly clarify even further, what do I mean by EAAS? Uh, emulation as a Service is a server stack that can combine and consolidate the capabilities of a number of open source hardware emulators. Um, it enables users to create and interact with and return to persistent computing environments. And those environments can be whatever combination of software and hardware those emulators allow. So even here we can see some, some Apple, some Atari, you can do Windows, whatever the emulators can do, we can do. And the real advantage is that you can do all of, uh, of the combination of creating environments from the convenience of a, of a web browser, um, which greatly reduces redundant setup on different machines. Um, and it's obviously ideal for ultimately delivering emulated environments to patrons or end users. The EAS platform has been under development in Freiburg, Germany since 2011. Um, the academic team that originally developed it has also spun off this um, commercial wing open SLX that provides paid support, but it's mostly the same people. Um, and particularly of relevance here, in addition to um, joining us for EASY, the same team has been working on a German state-funded CIDR project that's citing and archiving research. Um, again, definitely check and encourage um, this community to check them out. And that project's goal is specifically to build functionality for reproducing software-based research on top of EAAS. Uh, so we are looking to also make use of those advances here in the United States with the EASY project as well. Um, and Lamore's examples from ISPS have provided a great use case for the different approaches EAAS offers as a platform for reproducible access, as well as um, some of the benefits and the challenges ahead for integrating these approaches into university or library services. So taking just as an example, the first object deposited in the ISPS data archive we can see the data for this voter turnout study was originally put together in 2006, um, and the set contains Stata and R scripts for performing analysis. Um, we've discussed with Lamour three possible approaches for offering researcher access to a set like this using emulation as a service. The first approach is based on the core functionality of EAAS and relies on an emulation service provider, so that would be someone such as myself, um, to manually reconstruct the data set's original computing environment in EAAS using the existing metadata in the ISPS data archive about software dependencies from that code review process that um, 
that data review process that Lamore described, as well as um, combining that with Yale's growing collection of legacy software. We can see here, uh, we started with a contemporary Windows XP environment and individually added in each dependent application until all the needs associated with this set in the data archive were met and then added in the data set itself. Any researcher or patron we give access to this environment can now interact with and ideally reproduce this analysis in a far more appropriate context than just trying to download and reproduce this study in Windows 10. You can see we're running Stata 10 in this example um, when Stata is currently up to, I uh, uh, think about version 16 and is no longer at all backwards compatible with Stata 10 files. From a service perspective, this approach is great because we can provide it right now. You're seeing the evidence. If you run an EAAS server, you could do this too. But it does require the intervention of a more experienced emulation or EAAS user such as myself, which is not something many organizations are going to have right now. And since my domain expertise is emulation and not Stata analysis, there's no guarantee that this environment has been properly tailored to computationally reproduce the given data set until we've had some consultation with a domain expert like Lamore and her team. So this can be a time intensive process that involves back and forth communication between multiple staff. To address that challenge, we have been developing what we call the Universal Virtual Interactor or UVI, which is an API that automatically draws on existing environments and metadata in EAAS to render digital objects without the intervention of a human emulation service provider. What I mean is a curator or researcher can upload their files to the UVI service, and here we're dealing with the exact same set of files as you just saw, and based on automated file format analysis, we'll receive back a suggested environment for interaction. So in this case, once these files are uploaded and analyzed, since we already manually created that matching Windows XP environment with all the dependencies, the UVI is going to suggest that same environment and will ultimately end up back in the same place. But the service advantage here is that we've automated approach number one. We could potentially satisfy patron or curator need without any intervention from emulation staff or emulation service owners. Uh, the benefit is also that the recommended options for this service are only going to get better and reduce redundancy over time as we create more and more environments with common combinations of software dependencies. The disadvantage is that someone with domain knowledge is again going to need to at some point check these results to see that they did reproduce correctly. And if they didn't, if we don't already have a suitable environment for reproduction, it's back to the EAAS service owner to assemble what is needed. This method is also contingent on ongoing improvements to file format analysis and software description schema, which we are covering as part of the EASY project, but we're not quite ready to call this like a production ready approach. We're moving towards it quickly. Our final approach hasn't been tested directly with ISPS data yet, um, but we're really excited about its possibilities for future reproducibility, which is this idea of directly importing common container or package formats into EAAS. So if we assume that a data creator has already made use of a tool like Docker or Singularity um, to tie their data and their software dependencies together into a single file or package, and that container is what is going to end up getting deposited into data archives, the team at OpenSLX has developed a way to take the vendor-specific runtimes of container platforms and the unpredictable hardware that end users or patrons are trying to rerun those containers on, and they basically genericize them down to the core computing components that all of these systems rely on. In the vast majority of cases, that's going to be replicated with a, a genericized runtime, a generic Linux operating system, and the kind of generic PC hardware that can be recreated by common emulators. From the service perspective, this again allows for curators or possibly even patrons to automatically import save and access containers running in an appropriate environment without requiring any individual intervention from an emulation services provider. Again, EAS can even fetch containers and packages from public registries like Docker Hub. The example you're seeing right now is um, us pulling the 
Docker's official hello world image, which is their just sort of starter container um, directly from Docker Hub. Well, we're, we're sped up here just um, in the interest of time, but I assure you it's not, doesn't take too long. Um, we hope to build on existing reproducibility tools and discussions with this emulation as a service tooling. Um, we're also investigating how we can interact with packages produced by Reprosit, um, for instance, um, so that curators and librarians can take advantage of the Reprosit approach to consolidating and reducing, uh, reproducing dependencies, um, which we are generally big fans of in terms of, of a more long-term and stable approach to reproducibility than Docker's. Uh, and we also just recognize, as Lamar said, from looking around at the field, that the objects deposited in archives are only increasingly going to be complex apps and sets in container and package formats. The downside is that this is obviously not a solution for research that has not been packaged with these tools, like the older sets in ISPS data archive. And it does require EAAS to keep up with popular container and packaging implementations like Docker, like RepoZip in order to do that work of genericizing some of their components. But we hope that this is a reasonably realistic goal as we work to introduce emulation more and more into this ecosystem. Um, so we know that we just threw a lot of information. And if you have any questions about the tooling and about our use cases, we really encourage people to reach out directly. Thank you.